Dalton residents, I am reporting for duty. There's um, a ton of misinformation. I try not, I really do not try to feed into it, but I want to just make sure that I clearly state for the record, I've never been arrested or walked out by anybody. And my short response to some of those residents was, there's one person on the board who has a mugshot, and we know who that person is. FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Why do you believe the mayor has attempted to, or shut down your business, basically? Because I wouldn't donate the money anymore. I wouldn't give her any more money. I mean, so does it surprise any of us that when she been able to get more power, more resources, that she will do what she's been currently doing. Allegations of corruption and political retaliation being lobbed at her from trustees, business owners, and even the attorney general's office. And, and I'm glad to hear that the uh, FBI is out here. I want them to hurry up with this investigation and get the grand jury to indict this woman for spending all our tax dollars. The actions of Tiffany Hayard has uh, captured, obviously, our, the world's attention, right? And all for the wrong reasons, becoming emblematic of the type of behavior that citizens are just unwilling to tolerate. Everyone's just tired of it, even people who don't live there. And, you know, Hayard's alleged misuse of power and corruption has been detailed for about two years. It's disgraced her office. And at this point, I think people are looking for some accountability, provide some relief for the residents who have been dealing with this. I think the FBI have been around for a while, but I think as this case becomes more and more public, people always want to ask, what is what the FBI is doing? Because the money has been has been spent, it's probably still spending, and you need that investigation to kind of come swiftly. So let me show you the, the video that I saw about the, the bars that were shut down because they had opinions on Tiffany Hay that she didn't appreciate. So let me show, let me show that video real quick. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. More controversy in South Suburban Dalton. Two popular bars shut down by police just hours after the owners talked to Fox 32. A village trustee also says it's because they're not financially supporting Dalton's mayor, Tiffany Henyard. Here's Dean Placa with the latest on the corruption investigation. Is it coincidence or retaliation? Both of the Dalton bars that were raided and shut down last night, we visited the day before as part of our ongoing investigation into allegations of political corruption in Dalton. Isn't that crazy, though? Ms. Stubbs, we're talking about nothing can surprise me. Okay, like the pattern behavior, right? You, you, They had some people talking, Pablo's Bar and I guess Ricky Bar and Cafe. They were shut down right after they talked to the media about some of the issues that they've been dealing with as a, like a larger collection of what's going on. This is a pattern of broad harassment tied to the lack of financial support for this mayor. They just rushed in here, put police at the front of the door like they was doing a raid on the drug houses. A team of Dalton police officers raided and shut down Pablo's Bar and Cafe and Rinky's Bar and Cafe, located on Sibley, about a block apart. Everything going peacefully, nothing going on. There's like 10 police cars came in and they start pushing customers from here. And he said, if you don't leave, we're going to lock you up. Employees and owners say it's part of an ongoing campaign of harassment by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard that is costing jobs and money. Their business licenses have been stripped by Dalton, but they've continued to operate with a state license. I have like over 23 employees. They work from the local township. Now, end of the day, all the employees, they're going to lose them job. It's ridiculous. We all have mouths to feed. We all have kids. Uh, they're not giving us no explanation. On Monday, talking about vindictiveness so vindictive to a point where it's it's not even it's past the point of just rationale like when she shouts this order to go into those bars why there's not one person to sit back and say hey this is probably going to be a bad idea they're going to go back and talk to the media just just makes things worse but she she's not in our reality she's not there and I guess the people who are who are following these orders are just following the orders. They don't care either. We visited both Rinkies and Pablos to ask about allegations. Their licenses were being held up for political reasons. Then last evening, we broke the story that FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Less than two hours after our story aired, police raided the two bars. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. 
two hours. Two hours. So someone was already either spying. I think Stephanie Wiedemann, she talked about there's just be cop cars just standing out there. This is a legit mafia style move. I guess you have spies everywhere. And what's the reason for the closure? Like, hey, you close these two bars, the ones who the media was talking to just two hours ago, they came and come up with a reason why they, they, they took a license away. They're not even going to bother to provide a lie. They just came in, shut them down, act like they're criminals, act like they doing nefarious things. Like what that guy said, it's like we are a trap house. It's a business. Those are employees now. They're going to lose their ability to earn income, which is probably the worst time right now to, to lose any income right now. You know, this mayor just doesn't care. Dalton trustee Tammy Brown says she believes the raids are meant to send a warning to others not to talk. And she believes there's a reason so many Dalton businesses are having trouble getting their licenses renewed. I'm sure that they were asked to donate, make a donation, and most likely they didn't make a donation. So you don't get a chance to stay open if you don't pay pay the queen's ransom. This is extortion, right? What happens when the mafia comes into the business and say, hey, I think you need to pay for some protection, and the person doesn't pay, what do they do? Make a problem. Throw a brick through the glass, just cause enough to a point where you get the person to say, all right, I'll pay so you can stop messing with me. I have a business. I need to make money. I have employees. I have bills to pay. But that's some straight mafia move. That is crazy. There's definitely incompetence. There's some. There's narcissism. And it's just greed. And everyone care more about themselves than actually serving the people, which is the worst kind of people that should serve public office. But let me see if I could find the slum lord video. I think he had it. Okay, so this is it. I'm going to show you guys. This is the pattern. And like what uh, Miss Stubb said, if they knew the extent of fail businesses, the Good Burger, she just ripped off the name Good Burger. Like, you know, and that was a good movie too. But anyway, this is before she got to be a mayor. Um, of course she wouldn't be hired. But let me show, let me show you from the individual investor. I'm going to put his links and everything onto the onto the description below. Hopefully I remember that. Water leaks. Nearly three months ago, we first exposed serious problems in a South Suburban rental home owned by a Dalton Village trustee. Since then, the renter says it's only gotten worse. CBS2 political investigator Dana Kosloff has also learned that trustee is pocketing tens of thousands of your tax dollars for a house that's now unlivable. You need to get your clothes out for school. Jacqueline Smith and her two children called this hotel room home for almost a month. Ever since the Dalton House they were renting from village trustee Tiffany Henyard was slapped with this. A big red sign that I cannot live there because it's unlivable. Unlivable mostly because of mold. All mold. He's grown on the bottom of the shoes is mold. Crazy. I mean, you look at that. Straight up slumlord. How terrible some landlords are taking care of properties. Um, in New York City, it's a big problem with how you just find so many of these people and they still do not take care of everything. They basically try to a band-aid, a bullet wound, basically, in terms of fixing these properties. But she's getting money from the money from Section 8, and she doesn't give a damn to fix anything that's happening. So a point they have mold. Mold, it, it's extremely dangerous to have in your home. I think that, that goes without saying. Extremely dangerous. Mold that Smith's landlord, Trustee Hanyard, pledged to immediately clean up after we first reported on the problem in August. And that's where... It started. Smith says workers came and painted. The house even passed a village inspection. Issues abated, notes Inspector Brian Thigpen in this September report, except they weren't. It's horrible. Enter activist Dave. I think that I think they just painted over the mold. I'm looking at it. It looks like they didn't clean, they didn't take care of it properly. They just oh just paint paint over it. Just paint over it. They they won't know. They won't notice that you did nothing to clean that. It just oh just put just slap a coat of paint on it. David Lowry, who called Dalton directly. Suddenly, the house deemed livable on September 3rd became unfit for occupancy on October 15th. Lowry's theory? The trustee used her power uh, and influence. We caught up with Henyard before last week's board meeting. I want to talk to you about that house on Dearborn. Can we do that? Uh, my attorney's right here, so if you got any questions, I have legal counsel. Talk so, to my attorney. So you want me to talk to your attorney and not you? You can't tell me how that house failed an inspection in October when right it just here. passed it beforehand? If you have any questions. So we did. The how lovely is that? She's for the people, remember? She 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 loves on the people. She loves on them. You know, even the ones that, that are paying, getting money from the government to have a property so people can to live and not suffer. Well, she loves them, though, to a point where someone's asking, hey, how are you able to, that's a good question. How are they passing inspection? I don't know. 
Good question. I have no idea. I mean, if it's that bad, which I'm, I'm sure it is, there's no way it should have passed inspection and then go from not ex it, it didn't pass. Now you got to get out. First, it was able to pass, you know, but just a few moments later, sometime later, no, it actually is. And you got to get out. It's it's inhabitable. And she couldn't talk. Did she ever deal with uh, being accountable for her actions? It just doesn't happen. Inspection process is within control of the village, not of the trustee. She has been instructed by the village attorney to be treated just like any other property owner. Dalton's attorney says the house's inspection history is under investigation and village records show a slew of past problems with the house passing, then failing, then passing inspections for years, even before the Housing Authority of Cook County approved it as a rental property eligible for government housing assistance money. Money, or Section 8. An eight employee says as a landlord, Henyard's received 36866 taxpayer dollars. Let's just, let's just pause it so you guys can see that, that kind of money that she received by... So she that went into her a bank account. And Sherry, I'm, I'm glad you, you popped in because you told me this earlier about that. They don't even have certified code enforcement officers because they, they people who don't know what they're doing are passing it. So if you're not satisfied, you, you don't know what you're doing and you're passing something that shouldn't be passable. So, but she received $36,866.86 from Section 8. And she couldn't take some of that money to fix the, fix the issue for that family. Pattern of behavior. That's why I call her a predator. Pattern of, she does not care about anyone but herself. I mean, pretty obvious. I don't know if I would be able to sleep right if I had a property and it had mold in it and kids were in there or there was there was a fire risk or an electrical fire and i i and i didn't do anything about it i don't know if i could live with myself but some people are different and she received that, that amount of money i mean so does it surprise any of us that when she been able to get more power more resources that she will do what she's been currently doing in section 8 rent payments since 2017 when smith moved in money that kept coming even after this foreclosure notice was filed against the house last year. I'm staying in a hotel, so. All the while, Dalton taxpayers even helped foot the bill to keep Smith's family off the streets. He thought that, you know, the bill should be compassionate. She had nowhere to go. She had children. What we thought was to actually bill uh, Trustee Henry. I learned this afternoon that Jacqueline Smith and her kids are now staying with a friend. The village is no longer paying for the hotel, and she doesn't have the money. Wow. So again, like we said, pattern of behavior. Paul Roberts, that's a fantastic line. She loves our money and there's nothing we can do about it, but you guys are doing something. And I think the whole world has noticed. And now I, I am looking forward to the next board meeting and see how defiant she's going to, because she will come out defiant. I, I agree with Stephanie. She does not understand what she's doing is wrong. I think she thinks she's doing everything correct. And that's extremely dangerous. That's why the situation is happening with the bar and all the other businesses and her continuing just nonsense of using the police as her own personal force. I mean, taking a bunch of guys, calling them Homeland Security, taking a business, calling it Good Burger, spending how much money she spent on that ice rink. Now, uh, I've heard reports it's two million. I don't know how much. That's a lot of money. Was it necessary? I mean, you know, the, the residents of Dalton can answer that question. But it just we, we're seeing more and more and hopefully they get into everything. And especially with this guy, Keith Freeman. Well, she wanted attention. And now she had, oh yeah, she has, she has a lot of it. 